This is the most valuable briefcase in the world. As plain as it may look, this briefcase contains items that can decide the fate of the entire civilization. As such, the U.S. president cannot go anywhere without it. Here's the briefcase with Joe Biden on his visit to the U.K. Here it is again with Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and all the way back with John F. Kennedy. But why is it so important? Nicknamed the nuclear football, the actual name of this briefcase is Presidential Emergency Satchel. It's a hefty leather bag weighing around 45 pounds and is also durable against bullets and explosives. Interestingly, the origin of this briefcase goes way back to the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 during the era of President John F. Kennedy. Previously, had about half an hour's warning for a nuclear strike by bombers or missiles from the Soviet Union, which was enough time to reach a secure command center like the White House Situation Room or the Raven Rock Complex in Pennsylvania. But the placement of the short-range missiles in Cuba and later submarines near the American coast reduced this response to less than 15 minutes. On top of that, American nuclear strategy at the time relied on massive retaliation, meaning a single all-or-nothing response using every available weapon. This troubled President Kennedy, who famously spoke on the insanity of two individuals on opposite sides of the world being able to decide the fate of civilization. Kennedy had to draft a memo with pointed questions about the nation's nuclear command and control system. His exact words were, what would I say to the joint war room to launch an intermediate nuclear strike? And how would the person who received my instructions verify them? However, after carefully reflecting on Kennedy's criticism, Captain Edward Beach, a formal naval aide to President Eisenhower, created the nuclear football we know today. This portable device, first used around May 1963, provided the president with immediate access to nuclear launch capabilities. Now, even with this upgrade, there was still no way to really ensure that the president would not just order a nuclear attack because he felt like it. For this reason, there are several protocols to be enforced before an order for a nuclear launch by the president can be authorized, but we'll get to that in just a bit. For now, let's talk about what's inside the mysterious bag. There are four essential systems inside the nuclear football. First up, there's the Black Book, which is approximately 9 by 12 inches in size, containing 75 loose-leaf pages printed in black and red and holds retaliatory options. Then, there's a book listing classified site locations. This is similar in size and color to the Black Book and provides information on various sites across the country where the president could be relocated in case of an emergency. There's also a manila folder containing detailed procedures for the emergency alert system, typically stapled together with 8 to 10 pages. And lastly, there's a small card measuring 3 by 5 inches which holds nuclear codes and also known as the biscuit. Now, you probably recall sometime in 2018 when President Donald Trump teased a nuclear war with North Korea's president. He specifically said in a tweet that his nuclear button is bigger and more powerful than Kim Jong-un's. President Trump's statement raised a lot of questions and concerns. Is it possible for the president to simply start a nuclear war at will by simply pressing a button? Well, the simple answer is no. The president doesn't have a literal big red button. If the U.S. president, as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, were to make the decision to employ nuclear weapons, there are a series of protocols that would have to be set in motion first. So first up, the briefcase is opened and the command signal, often called a watch alert, would be dispatched to the United States Strategic Command and possibly the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The president would then engage in discussions with key advisors, such as the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to assess various attack options outlined in preset war plans, which stem from O-Plan 8010, a U.S. document containing different strategies for a nuclear attack. Now, the United States has 5,244 nuclear warheads, and the chosen plan could entail the launch of one or multiple intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now, the president's identity must be positively confirmed using a special code provided on the biscuit before military action can be initiated. 
Authentication involves a challenge code comprising two phonetic letters exchanged between the President and the National Military Command Center Deputy Director of Operations. The President would read the daily phonetic letters from the biscuit, and the Deputy Director would either confirm or deny its accuracy. Now, U.S. military personnel are obligated to reject unlawful commands, as stated by John Hyten, the former commander of the U.S. Strategic Command, STRATCOM, in 2017. He stated, We carefully consider these matters. In the event of illegality, Hyten affirmed he would inform the president and put heads together to consider other legal alternatives. In more extreme cases, the cabinet could potentially remove presidential authority through the 25th Amendment although such actions were rumored and never actually happened, especially during the rocky Trump administration. However, more possible scenarios involve routine shifts in command authority, such as for scheduled medical procedures. In this manner, November 19, 2021 marked a significant moment. President Biden had to be placed under anesthesia for a medical procedure, temporarily making Vice President Kamala Harris as the first woman in U.S. history to assume the role of Commander-in-Chief for 85 minutes and having the all-powerful biscuit in her possession. Now, we keep talking about how the president is always with his briefcase, but he's not the only one who gets to have access to it. In total, there are three nuclear footballs two for the president and vice president, and one stored at the White House. The tradition of providing a football to the vice president began during the Carter administration, ensuring command continuity if something happens to the president. The football, containing important nuclear codes, is entrusted to one of several rotating presidential military aides, each from a different branch of the armed forces. Their duty status is classified, and they are commissioned officers in the U.S. military, ranked 04 or higher, having undergone rigorous background checks known as Yankee White. These officers must ensure the football is always within reach of the president. As a result, they are constantly by the president's side, whether walking, standing, or accompanying him on various modes of transportation like Air Force One, Marine One, or the presidential motorcade. It's already clear that this football can be a really dangerous weapon in the wrong hands. Remember that we mentioned President Kennedy's concerns about the sanity of the president in charge of it? Well, he's not the only one who shared these worries. During the Nixon era, Air Force Major Harold Herring asked a troubling question about nuclear attack orders. What if the president ordering a nuclear attack is insane? Major Herring, an Air Force major known for rescuing pilots in Vietnam, was training to be a missileer at the time, responsible for launching nuclear weapons. According to him, he had naturally presumed that there must be mechanisms in place to prevent one individual from arbitrarily ordering the deployment of nuclear weapons. He lost his job immediately after. However, Major Herring's question prompted a response from Ron Rosenbaum, who labeled his question as the forbidden question in his book how the end begins. He said, You might think such a question, the sanity of a president who gives a nuclear launch order, would require some extra scrutiny. But Major Herring's inconvenient query put a spotlight on the fact that the most horrific decision in history could be executed in less than 15 minutes by one person with no time for second guessing. Now, outside the sanity of concerns, the briefcase, as valuable as it is, has been mishandled a lot of times in the past. Take, for example, Jimmy Carter, who started keeping the biscuit in his jacket pocket when he was president and eventually misplaced the card in a suit that was sent out to be washed. Also, immediately following the 1981 assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan, the biscuit was taken off of him by the trauma team at George Washington University Hospital after they made cuts to his clothes. Later, it was found on the emergency room floor, unsecured in one of his shoes. So you see, mistakes have happened and will continue to happen, but they will not put an end to the use of the nuclear football. It's not a common accessory, but a tool to counter nuclear attacks and to make sure that the president is ready for anything, anytime. We hope that you now fully understand why the U.S. president always travels around with a briefcase. If you have any reservations about the use of this briefcase, do share them with us in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, join our membership, Paper Pilot Club, to support us. 
you'll get monthly custom paper airplane designs, early access to our videos, and exclusive member badges to stand out in the comments. Click join now and be a part of the adventure today.